Hello, this is Professor Brown Cedarberg, and we're going to look at getting a single character input through the keyboard by the user. Now, Java doesn't have a native method to get a single character entered by the user through the keyboard and return that as a character. We're going to see how to work around that. Now, what I have here is the outline of a class that I've named Demo Keyboard Character Import. We see that we've declared the class bound it, declared our main method, and bound it. Now the first thing we have to do is we have to add to this line that declares the main method. And what we're going to add is this throws exception. An exception is something that we'll study later on, typically in the second semester of Java. But just suffice to say that an exception is something that is out of the ordinary, that might happen. And so if we have something out of the ordinary that might happen, we have to announce it and we do so with the word throws and then we have to take care of it. For us in this example let's just trust me that we need to add the words throws exception to our line public static void main string args that declares our main method. Now what we'd like to do is to get a single character in from the user so I'm going to declare a variable of type character and I'll name it user input. Now, as I said, there's no native method for getting a single character and having it returned as a character by the user through the keyboard. We can, though, do this. We can use system.in. That is a stream, an object, that's physically associated with the keyboard. That stream, that object, system.in, can call the method read. And the method read reads in the next character entered by the user and returns it back. But it returns back the integer value according to the ASCII values of that character. So what's returned back by read is an int, the int that represents that character in the ASCII table. So what we need to do is we need to cast that integer into its associated character. And we'll do that with this casting our returned int into a character. We'll save that into our variable of type character that we named user input. So here we have in user input the character entered by the user. We grabbed it as an int, cast it into the associated character, and we should be all set. Now let's echo that value back to the user right, after we've gotten it in. Well, see, huh, this is pretty good. I've gotten it in without asking for it. Let's ask for it first. So we'll have system.out.println and we'll ask, please enter a character. The user will enter a character, we'll grab it and store it. Then let's echo it back. And we'll very nicely say you entered, and we'll correctly spell it, bad typing. And then we'll concatenate the value that is stored in user input. So let's see if this will compile. And it does, and let's run. I'm asked to enter in a character, I'll do so, I'll enter an A, and it tells me I entered an A. Well that's one character. Let's see if I could do this more than once. So I'll put a comment here, and then we'll have a second try. So I'm going to copy all of that, paste it in, and here I'll be getting in the second character. I ask them for a character, grab it, store it, echo it back. So let's compile. We have a clean compile and we'll run. I'll enter my first character and that's A. Notice that it grabs the A, echoes it back, and then I'm asked to enter in the second character, but I don't, I'm not giving any opportunity to do so. It seems to skip over grabbing something and then it immediately prints out you entered, it executes this line, and nothing's printed out. 
Well, what's happened is this. The method read reads the next character as entered by the user, and then the read head sits there. When the user entered in a character, they entered in the character and then pressed the return key. So this read read the first character. This read read the return key. So the return key, a non-printing character, was saved into this user input and then stored here. So this read read the first character, the A. This read read the return key. What I need to do then is get rid of that return key after this first read. So this second read will read a character and will allow me to enter one. So let's flush our line. Now, I could flush the line very easily by using the stream system.in and having it call the method read. That clearly will read the return line character and since I'm not storing it, it'll just be thrown away. So let me compile this and then run it. And I'm asked to enter a character, I do, there's an A. I'm asked to enter another, there's a B, and I'm all set. The issue though is I've assumed that my user is giving me what I expect. Users don't always do that. So let's run this again. And as I run it again, I'll have the user enter in AB, first, first entry. And you'll see that my first read grabs the first character of the AB and stores it and echoes it back. I then have this again. I'm not given an opportunity to actually enter something. I just have well what's happened here is this read and read the B. The read head was then left at the return key that was pressed by the user after they entered the AB. So this read is back to reading a return key. So this doesn't seem to work. Well I might think well I remember from the class scanner I've got a read line method so maybe I'll just have system.in call read line. And so I'll try compile or I'll try to and I find there's no such method associated with or available to system.in to that stream. So I can't flush the line that way. What I'll have to do if I want to flush the entire line is this. Let's go up to the top of our class and import java.util.scanner. I'll then create an instance of that class and I'll call it keyboard. And we see that what's associated with this instance of the class scanner is indeed the physical keyboard. That's the physical keyboard. So now what I'll do to flush the line is I will have keyboard call the method next line, a method that is available to an instance of the class keyboard. It does exist. And it will throw away what was entered by the user after that first character, and then we'll run. I'll enter in my first character. Let's have an A. Works just fine. I'll enter in a B. Works just fine. Let's run it again. And I'll have my user on this first try enter in A, B, C. And you note that it picks up the first character, the A, echoes it back. And then it asks me to enter another character. I'll enter in a T. It grabs it and echoes it back. So we're working just fine. What I might do knowing that I could use this code later on, I'm going to be cautious and I'm going to flush the line here once again after my second read. Knowing that sometime later I might add to this code and if I did so I don't want to leave my read head hanging here. So we'll compile again and we're okay. And if I were to run it, 
and we'll have an A entered in on the first time and I'll do B, C, D, E the second time and I enter to C. Now on our last run I just want you to see that when I run this program and the users asked to enter in a character to your computer a character you know, was whatever they grab here with this read it's whatever's entered by the user and that can be anything on your keyboard so if they enter in here a one that's picked up as a character and so what will be returned back is the character version of the int that was entered that's a one and it'll be a one so I'll have a one returned if they enter a two in the second time through it's a two let's run it one more time and see that this will work if my user enters in on first try one two three four I grab the first character of one two three four throw out all the rest and so on second request for a number if I give six seven eight nine it will grab the six and throw out the rest so here we have getting a key a character through the keyboard from the user we see a couple ways of doing it how we actually read it in is with the system dot in dot read that returns an int we cast it to a char if we want to make sure that we take care of flushing out the line to make sure that we don't have unexpected results we'll use this keyboard next line which requires an instance of the class keyboard and the importation of scanner or if we are very simply doing things we could use this system dot in dot not read line but remember dot read thank you very much